Hello everyone, this is YouTube Buddy. In this video, we are going to discuss about the for loop in TypeScript. First, we will take a look on the syntax of for loop. A for loop always starts with the word for. After that, you need to put a pair of parentheses and after that, a pair of curly braces. Inside that parentheses, we will have three statements and inside the curly braces we need to put the code block to be executed. Now we will understand what are the functionality of those three statements which are there inside the parenthesis. Statement 1 is executed one time before the execution of the code block. Statement 2 defines the condition for executing the code block and statement 3 is executed every time after the code block has been executed. Now we know the structure of for loop. We will write some code for the same. We have an array, array 1 which is an array of numbers. Now we will apply the for loop over the elements of array 1. We have written our code and now we will understand what's happening here. This is our for loop. Inside that parenthesis, we have three statements. The first statement says, let index is equal to zero. So we have created one variable, index, value of the variable is assigned zero. This is the statement which will be executed only one time and that is when the execution is coming to this line. And our second statement is index less than array one dot length. This is the condition for which the code block inside that for loop will be executed. The condition says the index variable which we have declared in the first statement that will be less than array one dot length. What is the length of array one? Length of an array is the number of elements inside that array. So length of array 1 is 5 as there are 5 elements inside that array. So array 1 dot length is 5 and this condition states that the index value should be always less than 5 and then only this internal code will be executed. And our third statement is index plus plus which means index plus 1. What do you mean by index plus 1? That is, this statement will increase the index value by 1. And most importantly, this statement will be executed every time after the internal code gets executed. Now we are coming to the internal code block. We have declared one variable element and the value of the variable element is assigned as the element of array 1. If the index value is 0, so this element value will be the first object that is 1. If index value is 1, element value will be 2 and similarly if index value is 4, the element value will be 5. And after that, we are printing that element in the console. Now we will discuss what will happen when this code is getting executed. When execution comes in line number 5, it creates a variable index and the value is assigned to 0 and it is checking this condition. If 0 is less than length of the array 1 that is 5, then it will come to the internal code block. As 0 is less than 5, so it will execute the internal code. It will create an element and the value of the element is first object of array 1 that is 1 and it will print 1 in the console and once this internal code is executed it will increase the index value by 1 so after this line the index value will be 0 plus 1 is equal to 1 and the execution will come again in line number 5 now we have the index value 1 and 1 is less than 5 so it will come to the internal code it will execute and again index value will be increased by 1. This process will be continued until this condition 
is failing. When it will fail? When the index value will not be less than 5. When our last object has been printed, at the time our index value will be 4. And once this line is executed, the index value will be 5. And if it comes to the line number 5, you see our index value is 5 and 5 cannot be less than 5. So this condition will be filled. And then execution will not come inside that internal code block. And here the for loop ends. Now we will save our code and execute. You see after execution we got 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 printed the integrated terminal. So our for loop is working perfectly fine. If we take another example of a string array, array2 and we run the for loop for array2, we should get a e i o u printed in our integrated terminal. We will execute our code once again. You see, we got a e i o u printed here. This is the overall concept of for loop. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next one. Until then, bye bye. Take care.